So first I will tack one side of this closure to sew it on. I sew on the closure first before I start adding the weft to the hair. Um, I will sew onto each con row at least once or twice I'll tack each con row. Um, I'll tack the closure at each con row to ensure that it's secure. Um, I'll do one side with this needle and then I'll do the other side with the needle with the other needle that I used to tack that side. Once that side is secure, I will go ahead and base the lace with my foundation so that the lace matches my scalp. Um, usually I do this before I started tacking the closure but I forgot so I'll do it now before I put the closure down all right now that I've matched the color of my lace I will then proceed to tack the other side what you want to do at this point is to make sure that when you're tucking the other side you hold the closure taunt onto your scalp so that it's flat on your scalp you don't sew it with any kind of um, gaps in between the scalp because the closure will curl up if you don't do it tightly enough it will curl up so as I'm sewing along this side I you will see me pulling this this lace down to make sure that I'm not creating any gap between the lace and from one side to the other I want the lace laying flat now I don't know why I didn't secure the hair it kept getting entangled in the thread but knowing me oh there you go there you go I secured it with a scrunchie to keep it out of the way um, I do have an issue with making my thread super long um, when I'm doing other people's hair it's very easy and more convenient for me to make the thread long so I get used to making the thread long um, but when you're doing your own hair you might want to keep the thread a little bit shorter so that you don't have it um, looping over the hair as you saw there you don't have it creating knots it makes it easier really just to have it like that so after secured both sides I will then go ahead and secure the front so you'll see me sectioning off a portion of the front that is so I'm stepping back on the lace before I start to um, sew the front so you step back a little um, actually I should have said this earlier but when I was placing the lace I place it a little bit forward so that there would be some here in front of the first rows of con rows that I did so I'm actually tacking the hair onto the cornrows at the front. Now, um, one issue I, in, I encountered when I started doing this was the center part that I made earlier. While I do think we should keep the center part because it makes your closure just a little bit neater when you are doing your own part in the closure, um, it did create a gap between where was actually sewed at the where was that sewed where is actually sewn at the front it created a gap um and i don't know if i like it because i'm not a fan of using lace glue i know i know but i'm not a fan of using lace glue so i prefer to have my lace um closure tucked down securely See the gap that I'm talking about? Right, so I prefer to have my closure tucked down securely so that any lifting of the lace is just like minimal. Um, but with the part, I wasn't able to achieve that. All right, now then I'll go. And, oh, I see. When I was cutting the edge, I ended up cutting the the thread that I started that side with so you see me having to go back and tack again tack that corner again because <laughs> I ended up accidentally cutting the thread 
that's one of the folly of doing your own hair. Sometimes you cut things, but it's okay. I wasn't, because I cut one side, I wasn't feeling very confident. So I went ahead and just tacked the other side again. Um, even though it wasn't cut, the thread wasn't cut on that side. But, you know, just because one side gave me issues, I, I thought, you know what, let me check and make sure everything is tacked properly. All right, so now I'll go and sew the back of the lace and you want to do the same thing as you did for the second side. You want to be pulling the lace back so that it's taunt and laying flat onto your scalp. So you go ahead and just sew across the closure. You can see my hands got so tired right then because I had to be holding my hand up and back, which is stressing. But that's what happens when you're your own hairdresser. You get the tired hands. All right, so I tucked that and then I'll go ahead and start sewing in the wefts. Oh, I wasn't very comfortable with the shade that I got initially. So I, you can see me go back in and add a little more foundation to make sure that my shade is matching. All right, so I started adding my wefts and I'm just sewing them horizontally. Initially, as you can see here, I've doubled the weft so that I can create volume. The hair isn't thin, but I do prefer big hair and I might be straightening this hair so more volume the better. So here you go, I'm almost finished installing the tracks. I didn't cut any of the hairs. I used the a 10 inch hair at the back. Then I followed that with the 14 inch once the 10 inch finished. And now I'm at the last end of the, I'm sorry, I followed it with the 12 inch once the 10 finished. And now I'm at the last end of the 14 inch hair so I didn't cut any of the hair I'm trying to ensure that the tracks are packed in so that when there are movements you can't see between each track because as you can see my hair underneath is a different color so if we should have any movement from wind or so you will have that clearly visible if the track isn't packed in tightly all right, so I just loop the hair back and forth, back and forth in each row, just looping it back and forth. I don't cut it at all. Um, one of the disadvantages of doing that is that you end up, you can end up with some high areas. And one of the ways to avoid that is to, as you can see, when I turn the hair, I focus on tacking it at the end first before I continue on. So you tack it at the end to get it as flat as you can before you continue sewing the track. As I come to the top of the hair, because that is the section that will be revealed, I am very meticulous. And also by this time, my hands are so tired and I'm just done. So, um, yeah. I'm on the last few rounds of laying in this track. At the top, I'm going super dense. I'm going close between each track. I'm laying each layer so close to the previous one so that there's almost little to no gap at all. And also because I didn't want to cut the hair at this juncture. So I was just like trying to get every piece of the hair just in and be done with it so you can see me going through just making rows on top of rows and get it that um this hair is pretty soft and the weft it seems very strong but it's not too thick so i was able to go around the weft but i was also able to go through the weft um, and I like to alternate between going around the weft and through the weft so as not to damage it, the track, and but also to still have that kind of secure stitch by going through the weft. 
like when you get to this part of your hair have short threads it will be annoying to keep stringing your needle but when you get to this part you have too many chances for the thread to loop around here that is previously sewn in the new weft that you're trying to put in your closure the comb your air your face jewelry just too many opportunities for the weft to get in the thread to get in the way so just make the thread short don't do what i did i'm an old dog and when i'm doing someone else's hair uh, I don't have the issue of looping because I can see where the thread is at all times and I can avoid any looping when I'm doing each stitch. But when you're doing your own hair, you want to avoid having the thread being too long because you don't have enough control when you do that. Yeah, but as you can see, just continuing to install that with. I think this will be the last row and as you can see it's not even a full row of hair it's just a small amount and I don't have a full section to put it because there's no space going all the way around so I will cut a tiny piece of that all right so here the hair is installed and ready um, and there I may use glue but as you can see, it doesn't move unless I physically lift it. So I may or may not use glue on that tiny piece of lace. I know everybody's not going to be happy with that. But personally, I am not a fan of glue. I've said in previous videos that I haven't found a hair glue that works with my hair. I sweat in my scalp and I have oil an oily forehead. So I've, I haven't found a hair glue that works as yet. So in the meantime, I'm not going to be stressing it, honestly. I'm in Japan, people don't know the difference <laughs> and I'm satisfied. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so I'm just admiring the hair. Now I'm gonna be lightly, lightly laying my edges. I genuinely do not like laid edges um i want to be nice and pretend like it's a political statement about letting the the kink be free or whatever but it isn't i just it feels like more work than it's worth and it's not like it just i don't feel like it adds anything really it doesn't add that much and my again haven't found anything that controls my baby here for any long period of time now I'm using got to be glue. It'll hold it for an hour or two or until I get my first face sweat and then it starts curling up. All right, and then here's the hair afterwards. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can see when I post new videos. Thank